Frosty fam, it's me, Karen Frost, here at Nail Decadent. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Thank you for joining me. So, I've got a video using some decals and some acrylic powders. I'm just showing you the decals I'm using at the moment. And these are the sugar skull type ones that I got from the beautiful Rachel Hanks at Print by Example. Her email not her email oh good lord great start to the video eh? yeah hmm website address <laughs> you can see it there it's printbyexample.com it's also in the description box below so you don't have to take notes so yes cutting out the decal that i will be using and i'm also going to be using some of these butterflies but i didn't want to use like all of them i wanted specific ones although uh, <sighs> At the, the at, it probably wasn't worth me even doing this this nail didn't come out that great with the butterflies on to be honest but oh well we start these things and then sometimes they go to plan and sometimes they really just don't but you gotta try haven't you don't know to try and I thought I'd show you because you know what I'm like if I mess up I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you so you don't do it <laughs> so I'm starting with the ring finger and I'm putting a base of white acrylic down. Oh, I forgot to show you what acrylic I was using. Now, I can't remember and somehow I didn't film like I normally do um, what products I used after the video. So, just know that the colours as usual are ones that I've mixed myself link in the cards to a video that I've done on how I mix acrylic colors myself um, but yeah these are colors that I've mixed myself you'll see them as I apply them to the nail and with my trusty bottle of deionized water that I have on my desk I'll just use a little triangle tray put a wipe you know lymph free wipe in that dampen that down with some of the deionized water put my decal on top of it to sit and then by the time that white has set up the decal will be ready to use and I can whack it on so yeah on the middle finger I'm using this blue color that I mixed myself it's a cute blue very nice blue so just getting that cuticle area nice and neat well as neat as I can get it and then bringing it all the way down to as far as it would go and then add another bead and bring that down the rest of the nail and then another bead to the cute to the very tip of the nail so that I get full coverage of that blue see now I can go back to the decal dabbed off the excess water on the kitchen roll and then apply it to the nail now I haven't applied my base coat which was very silly of me hence I'm picking up the water well the lymph-free wipe that's wet to maneuver the decal because it would have been so much easier had I put base coat down first <clears throat> and I also totally forgot to encapsulate it in the base coat and my monomer does melt it somewhat which is really gutting but like I said I'm going to show you where I went wrong so you don't do it see I'm struggling I'm absolutely struggling to get this thing in place why because I didn't put the base coat down and as you can see that I've put that monomer brush on there to try and sort it out get it to sit nicely and it started to crack and I'm like oh no oh no and you can see if you look it's gone all funny and I'm like, oh no what's going on and I at that point I hadn't worked out what I'd done wrong yet see this this is what <laughs> yeah I say to you I do these things when I'm not in the right frame of mind and I really should stay away from nails when I'm not okay and I'm on too many meds because things like this happen but you know it's it's a good teaching moment and in th that's the whole purpose of the videos you know teaching moments so 
Don't do what I just did. <laughs> put a base coat down first, for goodness sake. Then put your decal onto it. Then you can move it into place wherever it needs to go. Then you can f you can cure it. You know, just just cure it. It will stay in place. Then please put another layer of base coat on and cure that so that it's encapsulated then go and review your acrylic because these decals are not acetone and monomer and what's, what's the word chemical resistant so monomer will melt them as you saw but after I had filed it and everything I actually quite liked the effect because it, it did give it this crackle which actually looked really quite cool I know it's weird sometimes mistakes work but yeah generally they don't <laughs> in this case i actually liked the crackle it gave i thought it was a really cool effect but yeah um if you don't want it to look like that base coat yeah it's not rocket science but i was having a moment anyway so over that blue i have applied some of the spd london foil gel put that on cure that for a minute then put the butterflies on top and rub them in and then remove the backing and leaving the butterfly on the nail like so they're so cute and at this point I was like oh this nails it's, it's, it's looking really cute I'm liking it looking really cute and then and then yeah once the monomer hits those little flowers it really turns them dark so they don't look so vibrant and yellow anymore it's quite sad you'll see in a sec but i'm just adding some of those caviar beads didn't really need them to be honest there was enough on that now but i'm always going ott should have just left it without the caviar beads really and now i'm adding some glitter because you know i do like glitter it's very rare I do a set without any glitter in it. I do some, but mostly they have glitter in them. I, I am a bit of a magpie. So I've added some blue and I'm adding some gold glitter. And now you can see I'm, m the monomer is changing that yellow flower to sort of see through. So it's not looking that vibrant yellow anymore. You can see the blue coming through. And I'm like, no. So I was trying to get it to stick down with a bit of um, clear acrylic. It was because it was sticking up. And the more I put on it, the you know, the more translucent it got. And the less yellow it looked. And oh no. But I thought, you know what? I've started, I'll finish. No going back now, girl. Keep going. So to hold that in place, I've just grabbed a little baggy and I'm just holding that flower in place whilst that acrylic is drying probably should have just used some super glue you know nail glue but yeah you know me I like to make life difficult so I did it with acrylic and as you can see put some acrylic on that one and yeah it's no longer a nice vibrant yellow it looks crap <laughs> <laughs> oh wow well. yeah you might wonder why I'm putting this on YouTube when it looks awful but like I said these are teachable moments I'm teaching you how not to do things <laughs> I hate this nail I really do I hate this nail so bad but yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna cap it we're, we're gonna push on through I'm gonna cap it so yeah, using clear acrylic, I'll quite a wet bead so that it flows over those bits and bobs, the glitters and the caviar beads, because you want it to, <coughs> excuse me, you want it to flow in between them without bubbles and stuff. So it flows down in all of the little crevices and cracks and, you know, encases everything nicely. That's why. And I've not paid attention to my sides as much as I should have. So I am losing the shape a bit here. But I will pull it back when I file them. I'm going to have to file that now quite a bit. Get that shape back. Never mind. 
These things happen sometimes. I was so gutted with those flowers. I'm thinking back because I did these a little while ago. As usual, there's always a backlog of videos. Um, I remember the feeling when I was doing it, when the, I saw that those flowers went weird. I was like, no, I don't like this. But yeah, it is what it is. So, on to the little finger. And I am doing a marble with that yellow. It's like a mustardy yellow. And the blue that you saw me use. And also the white. It's not a... Oh, an orange as well. It's not the best marble. But it's a marble. It's a marble. It does the job. Trying not to muddy the colours too much. Because blue and orange... <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me kind of go brownie so I'm just trying to give it a hint of blue rather than having blue as one of the main colors if that makes sense I wanted it more yellow so that's why I've not used as much blue and now I'm using some of those loose glitters that I used before so the gold and the blue they're just fine holographic glitters, loose glitters that I'm just picking up with a bit of clear acrylic if it's dry and if the nail is still wet then I'll just use my dry brush and pat it into that wet acrylic <coughs> excuse me so covering up some of those bits that I wasn't happy with <laughs> if in doubt you know get the glitter out I was going to put glitter in the marble anyway I don't I really, yeah I like glitter in marbles just I like it. So on this index finger I'm going to do an ombre nail. So I have gone in with the orange by the cuticle area just getting that nice and opaque. Bringing the front of the bead down you know really fading and feathering it down towards the middle and then where that ends I will add the yellow as you can see. Fade that back and fade it down as well. So we get our blending of our colors went back in with a bit of orange to just help that ombre and again back in with a bit of yellow just to and fro to and fro I always do these layers thin so that I can to and fro between the colors I'm funny about my ombres I try and get them to look as good as possible so I will to and fro between the colors so keeping it thin allows you to do that if you put a, a, a lot of colour on in one go, then you're going to bulk out the nail and it still needs to be capped. So, yeah. Keep it thin and then you can play with your ombre and get it as perfect as you can. I mean, right, nothing is ever truly perfect, but you know what I mean. Perfect as you can get it. And now I will cap that ombre nail. So, using that clear acrylic, this bead was a little bit dry. So I was fighting it a little there. Got there in the end. Add a bead to the middle of the nail. Bring the front of that bead down towards the free edge. I'm going to need another bead up by the apex area for sure. There's not enough there yet. So that third bead I've put towards the free edge. Bringing that right down to the very end of the nail. Getting the right thickness there. Trying to make sure the nail is balanced on both sides. And like I said... I knew there wasn't enough there so add some more to build up the shape and structure of the nail so that it is a strong nail it might be on hand dolly but i will build them structurally sound regardless so on to that marble nail on the little finger i'm going to cap that one now that the glitter has had a chance to set in place so it won't slide around once I cap it again first bead went by that cuticle area get that cuticle area nice and neat add another bead where necessary then I've added another bead to the middle and bring that down towards the free edge as far as I can drag it and then I'll go in with a bead on that very very end of the free edge to get that thickness right now this marble is obviously uh, mostly marbles are lumpy and bumpy because of the way the way they're made so 
<coughs> excuse me, just make sure you really use your acrylic to fill out any dips where the you know the marble is dipped in make sure you fill those ridges in otherwise you will notice it when you're filing and now i will add some more acrylic to that ring finger because i noticed these nails still they looked a bit low on acrylic looked a bit thin so just added a wee bit more acrylic on them all just to make sure that they're all as a set are balanced between e each nail you know to look at all nails together and make sure that they are a similar thickness you know and width that's how you get a uniform set so now i will file these bad boys in so side wall side wall is the routine i'm doing this time as you know if you've watched my channel before i have various routines but i will only use one routine per set of nails so sometimes i start with the cuticle area first if i do that then i do that on all fingers in this particular occasion i'm doing the side walls the under arch first and i will do that on all fingers all the way through so if there was 10 fingers, you know, well, four fingers and two thumbs, I would do the same on all of them. That's how you get a uniform set. You make sure that you, have, whatever routine you have, you use it on each nail. You can have 10 different routines, but as long as you use just one on one set, you'll be fine. I've got a million different routines. It depends on how my hands are coping it depends on how my back is coping it depends on how i'm just my mood you know so as long as you are just using that one routine on all the nails that you are doing then it's fine it doesn't matter if you've got a million routines but just make sure you uniformly use one routine on all fingers and you'll be fine so as you see i am doing the cuticle area and then i went over the body of the nail with that violin motion and I'm just bringing it all in quite a bit of filing on this because I'm doing it all with the hand file as you can see I don't know why I decided to do it all with the hand file this day but yeah apparently I wanted to do it all with the hand file you see me use my e-file <coughs> I've got a right frog in my throat I do apologize for all the clearing of the throat I can't I've, I've tried I've paused and cleared my throat and it won't go away one moment i'm going to try again <laughs> right i think it's uh, a bit better now i still felt i still sound croaky oh i've drunk a ton of water as well i don't know what's going on with it at the moment i hope i'm not coming down with something not not the rona oh, yeah there's no rona in this house thank goodness but yeah so hand filing so i've gone around the cuticle area very gently at and then I've gone over the body of the nail in that violin motion so that I'm curving that nail from one side then going down the other side so I'm sort of up and over and down up and over and down just filing the nail as a whole and then I noticed that after I had filed that ring finger the little finger looked a bit too wide you do have to stop and look and make sure you're checking all the nails and how they look together <sighs> newbies always say my nails all look different they're never all the same size or they're never all the same shape and i can't get them looking uniform this is why you have to look at stop you, you know just file but stop every so often look at the nail how the shaping is going but also look at it compared to the previous nails that you've already filed and make sure you are following that same shape paying attention it it, it it changes everything if you're just head down whizzing away and you're just working on each nail individually and you're not paying attention to how they're looking as a set that's where you will miss things so stop look and check how it's looking compared to the nails that you've done before it makes a world of difference i promise you if you do that you'll get your filing spot on combined with a filing routine i promise you you'll nail it give it a go give it a go 
it will work. I know it will because I've been there. Remember, yeah, I've I've been there. I was a newbie once. So yeah, have a think about it. Give it a go, and if you give it a go, let me know. Let me know in the comments if you give it a go and if it's if it's imp helped improve your filing, how your nails look, your final product nails look. If doing what I've said helps, I'd love to hear if it helps you because that's my, that's what I want to do with my videos is I want to help newbies. YouTube for me wasn't out when I first started doing nails and when it did come out it was such a wealth of information and the visual you know so you, you not only had someone showing you what to do you know you had people explaining what they're doing and it, it was such a resource that I absolutely felt was invaluable that I decided eventually that I wanted to start my own channel and here I am so I'm just trying to pay it forward and give back to those that gave so much to me which helped improve my nail game immensely so just trying to do the same so I'm hoping fingers crossed that I'm helping you guys out I've nearly finished the filing now almost there for my frosty filing freaks there you go job done <laughs> So now it's time to top it off and keep it tough. The exciting part. So I've wiped the nails over with a lint-free wipe and rubbing alcohol to remove all the dust. And now, yes, top coating those bad boys. And you see that that nail, even though it's kind of crackly, with it actually adds to the effect. I think it looks like a really cool nail. I mean, yes, it would be nice if it didn't have the crackling effect in it, but... I just think it looks awesome with it. It's so cool. Not all accidents, you know, work. As you've seen, if you've watched a couple of videos down back, uh, yeah, I had a nightmare with a little fingernail, a colour block that just wasn't having it. <laughs> Mistakes don't always work out to, to your benefit, but sometimes they do. So, I'm going to be doing a little bit of 3D flowering. Flowering? <laughs> yeah. Uh, some 3d a 3d flower on one of the nails it was an afterthought to be honest um and because it was an afterthought i didn't put gloves on and i touched the product with my bare skin please don't do that it's uncured product and even though it's it looks like it's plasticine it's not it is uncured product and you should not have it come into contact with your bare skin under any circumstances because like I said over time with these chemicals from the monomer from the gel polishes from these products you can certainly develop an allergy and by using your bare skin on a product you are increasing your chances of developing an allergy so yeah if you're going to do this, please wear gloves. Don't do what I just did and touch it with your bare skin. Not a good idea. So I'm just going to cure that. Well, flash cure it in place. Oh, I did say this video was going to be a teachable video, didn't I? On what not to do. <laughs> so also, don't touch things with your bare skin. Yes. So I'm just going to pat and press those petals out and flash cure them in between and then we will be done. So I will let you watch the rest of the video in peace without me ranting on. I'm sure you've heard enough right now. Um, so yes, thank you ever so much for coming to my channel and joining me in this video, on this video, in this video. I'm not sure what the right term is there. But yeah, thank you for joining me. <laughs> if you have not subscribed already, why not hit that subscribe button? Join the Frosty fam. I'd love to have you. If you have enjoyed this video or it has helped you in any way, shape or form, go ahead and click that like button and let me know that it has. I'd really appreciate it. And it does mean something for my channel. If you hit that like button, it, it helps my algorithm thingy me bobs. And oh Lord, I've just touched it again with my bare skin. Yeah, I mentioned don't do that. But um, yes, that totally threw me off. Um, 
if you'd like to comment <laughs> you are most welcome to leave a comment that's all i've got for this time peeps thank you again for watching you take care now and i'll speak to you all again soon bye for now Rico de mani, pero pobre de su mai. No, si no es por la plata. Quiere eh. todo eso. Quiere comprar. Escucha. Lo que el dinero no le da. Quiere la vida, la que tiene. Con tantos bancos y placeres. Se llena la lista de mujeres. Y dices que estás mal. Como un par de años que pasó lo impredecible Te fuiste por un futuro y el pasado se quedó Después de un par de meses no sabía cómo sentirme Tú luchabas por tus sueños pero me abandonaste Un dolor de cabeza terrible En ti me pasó pensando Cuando dijiste te amo Mientras soltaba la mano Un dolor de cabeza terrible yo ya no quiero olvidarte Pero cuando amas a alguien Tú tienes que dejarla ir Cuentos de playa con fogata en la arena O como sirenas Esto no fue real Todos los besos y caricias ajenas Y todos mis temas yo te voy a extrañar Someday soon I'm gonna make it